we presented our experience uh, on the first in human study on a CD 123 NK cell engager, SAR 443579, in patients with relapsed or refractory acute myeloid leukemia, B cell ALL, or high risk myeloid dysplastic syndrome. We presented on the safety, the efficacy, the pharmacokinetics, and the pharmacodynamics. Now, <clears throat> CD-123 uh, is um, uh, widely expressed in hematological malignancies, and it's one of the uh, antigens that's also expressed on the leukemia stem cell. Uh, SAR 443579, uh, the drug, the drug uh, under testing here, uh, is a trifunctional uh, NK engager, uh, and it targets the CD-123 antigen on the leukemia cell. Uh, and binds to the CD, uh, 16, uh, CD16A and the NKP46 on the NK cell. So it, 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 it uh, leverages the NK cell and it induces the NK cell to kill the leukemia cell. This study is uh, uh, ongoing, uh, first in human phase one, two open label study uh, that's being run uh, across multiple sites. Uh, in patients with relapsed refractory AML, B, ALL, and or risk myeloid plastic syndrome. Now, it's a dose escalation study that we originally we have presented the data on, and the, the study design was that patient received uh, uh, SAR-579 uh, either IV twice weekly or on a weekly basis, depending on what dose level they were, uh, um, for a, a total of three induction cycles, uh, each induction cycle being uh, 28 days. And this was uh, if they achieved a CR or uh, a CR with incomplete hematological recovery, they could then transition to a maintenance period where they would receive the drug uh, once um, uh, they would receive the drug once every every 56 days. So uh, it was just not induction, but also maintenance uh, that followed uh, uh, that was followed by the uh, uh, followed the induction. Now patients eligible on this trial were patients who were older than 12 years. Uh, with a ECOG score of uh, two or uh, under. Um, patients with prior transplant were allowed. Um, patients uh, with a BALL or a high-risk myeloid dysplastic syndrome needed to show a demonstrable CD-123 positivity. That was not the requirement for patients with relapsed refractory AML. Uh, the primary objectives of this study were the safety and the tolerability and also the prim uh, preliminary anti-leukemic efficacy. Uh, as measured uh, as a comprehensive uh, CR rate, uh, the CR plus uh, CR plus incomplete uh, hematological recovery. We also uh, presented the PK and the PD on the clinical trial. A total of 43 patients have been treated on the trial to date. Uh, 42 of these patients were patients with relapsed refractory acute myeloid leukemia, one patient with high risk myeloid dysplastic syndrome. The patients were, um, uh, were, uh, uh, were exposed to a median of two lines of treatment, uh, the, the range being one, one to 10. The median age of the population was 68 years. 30% uh, of these patients had undergone a prior hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, and 84% of these patients had a prior exposure to venetoclax. Uh, as regards to the gender distribution, around 35% of the patients treated on the study were of females. Well, as going to the responses on the clinical trial, we, we saw responses on the clinical trial. In fact, we saw blast reduction across all the dose levels. But we, we uh, saw uh, responses in patients who received a dose of 1,000 microgram of the drug per kilogram per infusion. A uh, total of five responses were noted. So um, of the 43 patients, 15 uh, of these patients reported uh, had received a dose of, uh, had reached that uh, dose of 1,000 microgram per kilogram uh, per infusion. And out of these 15 patients, we saw five responses. Uh, a, a combination of CR and CRIs. Now, three of these patients are still receiving treatment on the maintenance phase. Uh, one patient uh, proceeded on to an allergenic stem cell transplantation. Uh, out of the four responders, two of these patients had, um, uh, uh, sorry, of the, uh, of the responders, four of the patients had uh, prior exposure to anetoclax and two patients had already had allergenic stem cell transplantation. Now, uh, uh, coming to the uh, adverse events, um, there were no dose limiting toxicity that have been noted on the clinical trial uh, up to the dose of 6,000 microgram per kilogram given on a weekly basis. The most common uh, treatment emergent adverse uh, events were uh, infusion related reactions that were seen in 68% of the patients and constipation that was seen in 26% uh, of the patients. Uh, there were some grade five events, but these were not uh, related to the uh, study drug. 
In terms of the adverse events that were related to the study drug, the most common was infusion-related reactions, uh, and the maximum grade we saw was grade two, and these this could easily be managed by interrupting the infusion, giving some extra pre-medication uh, to the, uh, including uh, uh, the uh, corticosteroids, um, uh, and we could continue the infusion. Uh, as regards to uh, grade three or higher events that were related to the study drug, uh, there were uh, reported only two patients. One was diverticulitis and one was a grade four neutropenia. In, interestingly, there were no cases of uh, immune cell effector neurotoxicity syndrome. Uh, we had a uh, uh, cytokine release syndrome noted, but it was mild um, uh, noted at grade one, only in a couple of patients. As previously alluded that we could see blast reduction um, across all the dose levels, but we, we found responses in patients who received this dose of 1,000 microgram per kilogram per infusion at least. Uh, we could see a CD123 expression observed, was observed in all patients and a robust uh, NKP46 uh, expression was observed in all patients. So in a sense, the study is still continuing. Um, uh, 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 the next steps that we anticipate on the study is uh, uh, deciding on what would be the uh, recommended phase two dose for expansion, uh, and uh, of course, treating more patients. We, we are encouraged to see that we've seen responses in 31% of these patients who've achieved a CR or CRI at a target dose of 1,000 microgram per kilogram per infusion, and three of the responders are continuing uh, to receive treatment with no dose-limiting toxicities and infusion-related reactions as the major side effect that we saw in the clinical trial.